Hi, this is Rick with Cahill, and today we're going to be talking about tape measures, rulers, and 100 foot tapes. So, when you're picking out a tape measure or a ruler, think about what type of project you're going to be working on and what you're going to be using it for. And always buy a quality tape too. Make sure that the blade is stiff enough where it's not going to flop. And take a good look at the numbers that you can read them and everything's legible. It's one of the first things I look for when I'm buying a tape. And the other thing is to think about the project you're working on. Tapes come in all sorts of different lengths. I usually like to pick something between 25 and 30 foot. So you've always got enough tape for whatever project you're doing typically. And then depending on the project you're working on, a lot of times you might need like a hundred foot tape. So this one's good for like when you're doing a big construction site like this where you're putting a building up and you want to measure the length of the wall or the diagonals and you're going to need a little bit extra tape. You flip this one over and this one has an engineer's scale on the back of this one. Another thing you want to consider when you're choosing a tape measure, think about the, the size of the blade, the stiffness of the blade. This one in particular has got a slight curve to it, which gives it stability and strength for when you want to extend the, the tape out a little further, you're by yourself trying to get a measurement. This one, if you take a look, we're almost out to 11 feet and it's still fairly straight out where you can get a good measurement. Now on a, another tape measure, a lesser quality one, this one's got a thinner blade to it. And if we do the same thing as the other tape, we extend this one out, you're gonna get out about seven feet and then the tape's gonna fold on you. So uh, always pick a better quality blade. Take a look at the curve on this too. As the blade is being retracted, go slow and make sure, here's another tip too, keep your finger on your other hand holding the tape away from the blade because the edge of this blade is sharp and quite a few times when it's retracting in, it's coming in fast, it's gonna slice your finger open. So make sure your other hand's not close to the edge of that blade. And after the blade retracts, make sure it's retracted all the way in and the spring's doing its job. A lot of times too, the last foot or two are, isn't going to retract in, so what you want to do is extend the blade all the way, whether it's 12 feet, 16 feet, or 25 feet, and then take a rag and maybe with some WD-40 and clean the blade off, and that's going to help it retract and lubricate the spring a little bit. Take a good look at the end of it. There's a little bit of give or play in the end of it, and that's designed that way. There isn't anything wrong with it. It's for if you're hooking your tape measure and pulling on it, this is gonna extend that much. To, and then if you're butting your tape measure up, it's gonna actually push in and it's gonna compensate for the thickness of that blade, the tip of it. A little tip I'd like to share with you. Take a look at the end of the blades. You'll see a little slot in the end of this blade and the same on this other tape you'll see a little slot on the end of this blade. What that's actually for is when you drive a nail in and you want to pull a measurement with your tape, you can put your nail on the left side of your layout line. And then the slot of your tape is actually going to hook over the head of the nail. So then you can pull a distance with your tape and it's going to hold the spot of where you're measuring from to get you an exact length. Here's another tip too, with the edge of your tape, what this slot can be used for, if you want to do like a radius and lay out a circle, drive your nail in the center of whatever diameter you're doing of your circle. So we can hook the edge of the tape onto the nail head. And if we're going to do like a two foot diameter circle, you can hold your pencil at 12 and then just swing an arc right around using the head of the nail and the tip of the ruler hooked on to get you a two foot radius. Another trick too that I like to do with a tape measure, say you want to cut the length of this board, rip it at 12 inches. What I'll do, lock the tape a few inches past 12. And then what I like to do is put your finger on the edge underneath the 12 
put it, line it up on the edge of the board, and then what you can do is take your pencil, hold on to the edge of the blade, and then you can just run your tape and your pencil at the same time, and it'll give you a parallel mark to the edge of the board that you want to cut. That, that comes in handy quite a bit if you don't have a chalk line. Another thing I'd like to talk about too, is when you're measuring up for a board in particular that you want to cut, always figure out, first off, it depends on what the board's for. If it's for a piece of trim, I'd like to use a smaller, finer tip so you get a more precise cut and measurement. But if you're doing rough form work and carpentry work and framing houses, a square carpenter's pencil is fine because you don't have to be that precise. So it all depends on what the board's going to be used for and how accurate you have to be with your markings. But you still, it's good habit to use a fine tip on your pencil, no matter which one it is. And always mark, say we want to cut the board 16 inches, put your mark there, and then on the side that's a waste or that you're not going to use, put an X there so you know that's not the board you want to use. Then take your square, square across your mark, and what I like to do too, if somebody yells a measurement to me, write it on that piece of wood, whatever the measurement was. If it's 12 and a half inches or if it's 16 inches, always write it on the board that you're cutting so when you throw them the board, they know where it's going and what it's for, intended for. Another thing you want to keep in mind too, if you're laying out studs for a wall plate or rafters or any type of floor joist, when you're making your mark at 16 inches, at 32 inches, at 48 inches. What I like to do after you mark it, say you mark it 16, we're going 16 inches on center with everything, put an X on the side where your stud's gonna be or your floor joist or rafter. And when you get to 32, put another X on that side and the same at 48. That way everything's consistent and all your marks are to the left or if you're going the other way, all your marks will be on the right. So when you're squaring across, your layout lines, you've got the X, so that designates where the stud's going to be nailed to or the floor joist or rafter, and just go right down the board. But as you're laying out something, always put an X where you want your stud to be, rafter or floor joist. So we're up to 48, so then we'll go 64, the same thing, throw another X on that side of it. Sometimes two guys will have a marker and they'll just put a marker down, which is fine, depending on if you're doing form work or houses. So always remember that if this is gonna be your waist side, make sure the blade of your saw is on this side of the mark. And it's no different too, if I'm cutting this board, I'm gonna make sure too that my blade is on this side of the mark, on this edge of that line. And then it'll give me a, the actual length that I'm looking for, it'll be more precise. Quite a few times, depending on the job you're doing and what type of work it is, a lot of times I like to use just my folding six foot stick ruler. It makes it convenient and you get a much more accurate measurement when you're using a stick ruler, especially for trim work. But one of the best features I found with this particular ruler, it has a brass slide on it. So they'll actually slide out. So when you're measuring between two boards for the length of trim, and say your ruler won't fit in and you want to get a measurement between the boards, what you could do is fold it in, drop your ruler in, and then extend the brass slide out and you'll get a much more accurate distance for what you're trying to get the measurement on.